Wonder Trade. Perhaps one of the most fun and chaotic ways to trade Pokémon ever conceived. A feature where you send out a random Pokémon into the world, and instantly receive a random Pokémon in return. With no negotiations. No having to write down friend codes. And no painful trips to the GTS necessary. Countless of my summer nights in 2015 were spent wonder trading with friends in Skype calls. And these fun nights with friends led me to a pretty ambitious idea. Completing the entire national decks in Pokemon Y using only Wonder Trade Pokemon, making exceptions only to evolve and breed. In August of 2015, I restarted my Pokemon Y to see if I could make that dream a reality. So, without telling anyone outside that friend group about my experiment, I did over a thousand Wonder Trades, documenting what I got in a spreadsheet. Things started out going pretty well, but over time, the project became an unorganized mess, with not nearly enough interesting footage. With over 1800 trades done, and 500 Pokémon in my Pokédex, I put the project on hold, indefinitely. Until this year, 2021, where I'm going to go at this again, and do it better than 2015 me could have ever imagined. Things have changed a lot since then, like, I used to get haircuts regularly, and I have a 3DS capture card now, and I stream regularly, and I have a whole community of people behind me that can support me working towards this goal, instead of going at it alone. More so than ever, this year, this really feels doable. So much so, that I'm not gonna even do any evolving or breeding this time. Every single Pokemon that I receive from my Pokedex, all 721, will be received through Wonder Trade. So this is gonna be the ultimate runback, and this is the video that will tell the story of it all. But that's not the only story being told today. Along the way, through Wonder Trade only, we're also going to accomplish this. Level 100. The pinnacle of power for a Pokemon. Very few Pokemon ever reach this level. This is a series of videos in which I push Pokemon's levels to the absolute limit by raising them to 100 in unconventional ways and environments. Because, more or less, I'm crazy. This is the Level 100 Gauntlet. I hope you enjoy. So now I guess I need to address the elephant in the room. How am I going to train a Pokémon to Level 100 with just trades? <coughs> Let's translate what that Fampy just said. So in the 6th Gen games, X, Y, Omega Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire, there's a special point system known as Pokémiles that the game quietly keeps track of in the background. And these Pokemiles can either be redeemed in the Lumio City Pokemon Center or in Marvel City for various prizes. One of them being the item that's a staple of so many of these Gauntlet videos, the rare candy that boosts a Pokemon's level. You earn these Pokemiles either by walking a thousand steps in-game or interacting with someone online. In this case, trading. The further away geographically your trade partner is, the more Pokemiles you get for the trade. So, as I attempt to complete the Pokedex, I'll be passively gaining these miles and working towards the golden number, 49,500, which is enough to purchase 99 rare candies to raise a Pokemon to level 100. So now I guess let's start a new file on Pokemon Y, and let's really begin. Greatest Route 1 of all time. There is one unavoidable dex entry that I have to get without Wonder Trade, and that's my starter Pokémon. So I picked Fennekin, and I named it Miles, after a certain fictional fox that it took me over a decade to realize was named after a Miles per hour pun. Since, you know, we're gonna be collecting a lot of Pokémiles. I don't think this unavoidable dex entry will ruin the challenge in any way, because I'm certain we'll receive quite a few Fennekin over the course of these trades. After receiving my starter, I could have started Wonder Trading right then and there, but I decided I wanted to play through up to Lumio City, where the actual Pokemile Redemption Shop is first, which requires us to go through these areas and get our first badge. So I'm going to play up to that point, using only this Fennekin and not catching any other Pokemon or evolving it in order to keep our Pokedex as pristine as possible. 
and I might as well go out and do that on a walk in the great outdoors. But playing on this walk was an unexpected extra gameplay challenge. Okay, so I forgot how hard it is to see the game outside in the sun on an incredibly clear day. So I'm in Santaloon Forest, totally lost. I'm actually out here pulling up a map of the area on my phone. Nature sure is beautiful. Plain and simple, the game was just too hard to see. So I did the rest of the prep back at home. In almost no time, I was fighting Viola. And I knew there was one thing I had to say. Ah! And shortly after, I arrived at my destination, Lumio City, where I would reside next to the Pokemile Redemption guy until this challenge was complete. We got one Pokemile so far. So everyone knows the phrase, a journey of 49,500 Pokemiles begins with a single trade. But I couldn't really illustrate the whole story if I just jumped into the first trade here, because there were actually a few more months of prep that led up to this moment this very day. Just for fun, throughout a lot of 2020, I'd occasionally hatch some Fiona eggs, trying to hatch a shiny one through the Masuda method. And I hatched over 900 before I finally got my shiny in December. I decided pretty early on into the hunt that I would actually keep all of these Fiona instead of releasing them, knowing I'd one day come back to this wonder trading. So I opened up Pokemon Bank, and I loaded all of my PC boxes on this file with Fiona, planning to trade them out into the world. Let's not instantly complete the gauntlet through Pokemon Bank right now, even though I could. I could have theoretically just traded one Pokemon over and over again without having to worry about doing all this, but I wanted to keep every Pokemon I got over the course of this as a keepsake, so I decided to go that extra mile. This of course also added Fiona's data to the Pokedex, but I'm confident that I'll get one of my own Fiona back through Wonder Trade, or someone will trade one out anyway. As an extra fun fact, the parent Fiona of all of these was something that I actually got over Wonder Trade from my friend Dallas during one of those Wonder Trade nights back in 2015 on Skype. To make this all organized, I also had to prepare my stream for this. I wanted to have the best opportunity to trade with chat whenever possible, so I programmed a little chat bot to have a little countdown every time I wanted to trade, so I could perfectly sync up hitting the trade button with the chat. And I found a Pokedex tracker that a lot of speedrunners use, so I can keep perfect track of all the Pokemon I have in the decks at any time, and have that on screen for people to check out if they want to help me finish the decks. With all of this prep work complete, it was finally time to start trading, that night, April 26, 2021. So here's our first Wonder Trade. Let's see how it goes. Absol Gang! Oh, is that a shiny Gabite? That's a shiny Meow! It's you out! Streaming this felt incredible. It felt like I had taken a step back in time to one of those Wonder Trade Wednesday streams that I used to watch, but this time I was the one streaming it and getting all the fun Pokemon and messages. There was barely anyone else on Wonder Trade, so I was trading almost exclusively with people in the stream. And the occasional trade bot, which was really surprising to me to see that they're still operating in 6th gen. These trade bots are actually going to be super helpful though for completing the national decks because them and hackers are our only hope for getting some of these mythical Pokemon. Certain Pokemon like Volcanion were only ever legitimately distributed with these special event ribbons, which also so happened to be the only preventative measure preventing a Pokemon from being wonder traded in the 6th gen games. So if a hacker were to remove these ribbons, they'd become fully tradable. So for once, shout out to the hackers. I don't know if I'd ever get mythical Pokemon like Lunatone with hands without them. Every single Pokemon that I got had its own story, and some of them even literally told stories with their names. Bergmite? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> oh, it will. All in all, through all the funny nicknames and super obscure channel references, this was some of the most fun I had ever had streaming, and I already knew I was going to be bummed when it was all over. But thankfully, there was still plenty of wonder trading to do after this first night. Alright, end of the night. We've done 200 trades. We've got 164 Pokemon in the Pokedex right now, nationally. And, in terms of Pokemiles, we've got 4,734. 
So we have enough to buy 9 rare candies, putting us effectively at level 10. So we're about a tenth of the way there. I ended out the night tweeting out a picture of my progress, so people who wanted to help me finish the decks could maybe catch a few of those Pokémon for next time. April 28th, day two. Trees are pretty cool. And today I'm going to be streaming for this Arbor Week charity event that's going on. On stream tonight, I'm going to be double hunting Trevenant, which is a tree, and hordes, while I'm also going to be doing some wonder trades for the gauntlet. So this will be a fun time. For the trees. So I had a crazy and chaotic stream day two. Hunting for this Trevenant, wonder trading, and raising money for the Rainforest Trust, thanks to the professors who set up this whole event. We have Cheemsy in the flesh in the building right now. We just got Rickrolled. And very fitting for my Trevenant hunt in Arbor Week, I received my first trade evolution, a Phantom named Uncrustable. Thankfully, trade evolutions give you the dex entries for both Pokémon, so I don't have to worry about somehow collecting a Phantom with an Everstone since you can't cancel trade evolutions by mashing B, and there's the unique case of Kadabra where it will always evolve even if it's holding an Everstone upon trading. Probably because of some magician guy. But anyway, back to the wonder trades, and back to the Uncrustables. The topic of Uncrustables brought up the topic of peanut butter and honey, and I mentioned that I had never tried a peanut butter and honey sandwich before, and some people took offense to that. Eat PBH, Matt. This is aggressive. I'm bringing this up because this is some deep lore that will be important later, trust me. Another milestone I crossed off the list was actually getting one of my Fione back after 276 trades. It used to be a very common occurrence for me to be able to get my own Pokémon back, but I guess since I'm streaming now and since these Fione are kinda special, people aren't really sending them back out into the world as often. After a few more quality trades and not finding an Arbor Week shiny in the wild, I ended out the night at 322 trades and 9,000 Pokemiles, giving us 18 rare candies so far, with a national dex total of 230 Pokemon found. Whoa! Whoa! What? <laughs> Whoa! Then it was day 3, May 2nd, which was full of eventful trades, like getting the mythical Zero Aura, Niantic, aggressive sandwich propaganda, the Ultra Beast Buzzwole, and a visit from the CEO of Water that might come in handy later that night. I also occasionally would put the chat through something that I like to call an experience, where I would play some good music on loop until something happened, like someone trading me a shiny. And by far the longest experience happened this day on day three, where I listened to the German Naruto opening on loop until a shiny was traded. I'm gonna spare y'all the entire song, but here are a lot of the German Naruto references that I got traded. Twelve years ago, a nine-tailed fox suddenly appeared. If you believe it. Naruto, I'll be okay. Get Sasuke, he's really cool. Sakura, the beautiful. So I guess that was really only four, so that wasn't really a lot. You kind of had to be there to experience the full power of German Naruto, I guess. We seriously listened to that song at least 50 times, though. Everyone loved it. But anyway, I had 290 Pokémon at the end of the night. 13,133 Pokémiles, aka 26 rare candies, putting us a fourth of the way there. And 456 Pokémon traded. But there was one more thing I did before the end of the night. I did a trade that wasn't a wonder trade. I wanted to show everyone the current state of the GTS, how it was an absolute mess and full of hackers asking for Pokemon that you can't ever trade. And in the process, we accidentally stumbled upon this Gulpin. Please, I beg you! <laughs> Chungus Jr. Please, I beg you, trade me a Kyogre for my level 10 Gulpin. <laughs> so I did it. I traded my new Kyogre away for Chungus Jr., the legend. And don't worry, I already had Gulpin in my Pokedex anyway, so this didn't mess up the challenge or anything. Day three or four or something, I don't even remember what day it is. Um, I have a Domino's pizza visor here. We're listening to the Spider-Man 2 pizza theme 
until I get a Pokemon named Pizza. So, go nickname some Pokemon Pizza, and I wish y'all the best of luck. Only took seven minutes. That wasn't bad. It was clear on day four that some people had done their homework and were determined to give me some very hard to get otherwise dex entries. I was getting legendaries left and right. Dr. Mario! At this point, I was only a couple streams away from running out of my 27 boxes of Fione. So I knew I needed to breed something new, since I didn't want to hatch any more Fione since I already had the shiny. So to find something unique that was worth trading, I had to take a step back a generation, to Black 2. Where my primary objective was to hatch Deerling. More specifically, Deerling not in the spring form. Since in the 6th generation of games, the only Deerling or Sawsbuck that naturally appears in the wild is the spring form, and there's no way to change the form after you capture it since seasons don't exist within that generation of games. Making it so, the summer, autumn, and winter Deerling are basically transfer exclusive. If you do manage to transfer one up to 6th gen, you can actually breed it to have it keep its seasonal form, but I didn't know that yet so I was just breeding them in 5th gen, but I don't really mind because it was a nice nostalgia trip, especially having the daycare man scream at me whenever the eggs are ready. So whenever I found myself away from home, like going on a nice day trip to hang out with my friend Mr. Let's Play It, I was hatching deerling eggs in Unova. edges in the Kalos region, but I'm hatching things here in the Unova region for the gauntlet. And I'm here with uh, Mr. Let's Play. You got anything to say here? Yeah, Dr. Let's Play it here. I'm just uh, surveying this land, making sure it's safe for uh, community activities like shiny hunting and, you know, just walking through the gardens. Uh, seems to be pretty safe so far. I apologize for not introducing you as doctor. I'll get over it eventually. Mr. Let's play it. Just playing some Pokemon Rumble version. Yeah. GX. Yeah, we're in the GX terminal. Hatching some uh, deerlings here. We have found a shiny during the IRL. What's it gonna be? Ooh! It is Metacham. I'm gonna guess. Gutsy. Hardy. Hardidra. Hunchy. Hunchy. With a dramatic head turned on a shiny to say goodbye, I went home that day with at least two boxes full of deerling, though I still had plenty of Fiona to wonder trade before I even got to them. And then I continued trading. I must admit I was sometimes a little bit apprehensive about going live and starting trading, fearing that as my dex number went up I would have nights where I wouldn't make any progress on the dex whatsoever, leading to some of the days that I experienced in my first attempt at this when I wasn't streaming, getting entire days of only receiving early route Pokemon like Zigzagoon and Wurmple. But stuff like that never actually happened. Because as time passed, I realized that Wonder Trade is exactly what we make it as people. It's not like you go on there and the dice just randomly gets rolled and you receive just a totally random Pokemon that appeared out of thin air. Behind every single Wonder Trade, there's a person sending out that Pokemon. And when we all unite together, sending out all sorts of crazy Pokemon, like for a Wonder Trade Wednesday, or for the kids who just got the game on Christmas, or for some weirdo to just try and complete the National decks, that's when Wonder Trade really turns into something wonderful. I'm sure there are a couple cynics out there right now typing up comments talking about how this challenge really isn't all that impressive since so many people in the chat were sending out the Pokemon that I needed, and that this would have been way cooler if I attempted this alone, but I don't know if I'd ever actually finish the National decks if I went at this alone. Which is precisely one of the reasons why I stopped my first attempt at this back in the day. So while the circumstances of me completing this National decks might not be all that objectively impressive, 
What was created on Wonder Trade during these nights where I was streaming? A place where someone randomly truly could obtain any Pokemon, and where people were having a fun time trading with not just me, but with each other. Was pretty impressive. But anyway, all that sappy talk aside, after 826 trades and two more days of trading, we had hit 25,000 Pokemiles, or 50 rare candies. And my national dex was well over halfway done, too. Now at a lightning fast pace, I was hatching Deerling and transferring them up to my Pokemon bank, because May 17th was the day that I was going to run out of Fione. At this point, there were probably people who could fill up almost an entire box with the Fione they had received from me. But I was still also sending out Fione to people who hadn't received anything yet. Eventually, on my 927th trade, I traded out the last one. But the Fione's legacy carried on, even leading to me receive a YouTube comment from someone who recognized the Fione was from me without actually being in the stream or knowing about the Wonder Trade challenge I was doing. For the rest of the night, it was Deerling trading time. More trade shenanigans ensued, and more legendary stories like Martin and his quest for Chespin were told. And I think this is the first time that I've actually shown my setup in this video, because I didn't think to record stock footage before this. So there's that, too. And after being visited by the great Hortensia Heracross, I hit my thousandth trade, bringing me to enough Pokemiles to buy 63 rare candies, and a Pokedex with almost as many entries as my first attempt at this back in 2015. Back when I was actually training and breeding Pokemon and not 100% relying on trades like this time. And then the next day, another big milestone happened. I promised Ratsmacker that if I traded with him one more time, I would actually eat the peanut butter and honey sandwich that he was harassing me to eat. And of course, I found him. I have a pretty cool gamer plate right here. Just wanted to point that out. I have cinnamon raisin bagels, my favorite kind of bagel. I've got Jif Extra Crunchy, code card. This is the honey that I got, Carmichael's Cinnamon Honey. I thought Cinnamon Honey would be a really nice like addition here. So I'm gonna squeeze this onto the, uh, the other side of the bagel. And now we mash the two together like this. Boom, check it out. Peanut butter and honey bagel sandwich. So without further ado, not bad. Scale of 1 to 10, 7 out of 10. I think I was being a little harsh, and it's a little bit better than a 7 out of 10, to be honest. But anyway, one of my favorite trades was with this guy named Matt, with the message Matt, who sent us a Pokemon named Matt. YouTube also randomly crashed that night, in the middle of trying to listen to the Pepsi Man soundtrack, leading to this beautiful sound bite. I've never encountered these issues before trying to pull up music. This is crazy. Peps. <laughs> That's all we heard before it crashed. <laughs> Just peps. Another little milestone that happened was getting a bingo and filling out an entire row on the Pokedex tracker. And eventually, for the first time, I had to stop for the night because I was running low on Pokemon to trade, and I needed to hatch some more Deerling. Thankfully, I had just the weekend lined up to get that done.
Oh. Yeah, he's, he's fighting him off. Oh wait, this other male is gonna go in. He's gonna try and battle him. Oh, he's thinking but about it's it. It's the one v two. He's thinking about it. Uh -oh. oh, they're they're thinking about that's it. That's a bad idea. Oh. Dude, he's got the big claw. You can't compete with the big claw. Oh, that's a bad idea. Everyone knows, dude. They're trying to lock hands. Yeah, they they're are trying to shake. Oh, they just want to hold hands. <laughs> oh. What if we held hands? I see some of the Genesee grass. So I had a very fun beach trip with my friends, hatching a bunch of deerling along the way. But that wasn't the only hatching opportunity I had planned that weekend. I had another opportunity based off of a life-changing song that I had just heard a few days before on stream. What's I Walk to Burger King? I'll play that. Okay. This song was a cover of Green Day's Boulevard of Broken Dreams, but the only lyrics were, I walk to Burger King and then I walk back home from Burger King. So the next day, May 23rd, I set out to do just that. Today is May 22nd. I've got various things packed up. And I'm going on an adventure today. I walk to Burger King and then I walk back home from Burger King. Walk to Burger King and then I walk back home from Burger King. Is that some Garfield graffiti? Some Garfiti? I like to think it's Garfield graffiti, so I could call it Garfiti. I walk to Burger King and then I walk back home from Burger King. Walk to Burger King and then I walk back home from Burger King. Well, unfortunate news. I walk back home and I walk back home. I walk back home and I walk back I burger then I walk back home from Burger King Dude, there's so much litter here I even found a filet fish box Who even eats that? From Burger King I burger then I walk back home from Burger King I walk to Burger King But uh I'm going to attempt to loiter outside for a minute and get one wonder trade in on Burger King Wi-Fi. So let's see if we can do that. Unfortunately, my plans have also been foiled because it appears the Burger King Wi-Fi, I don't know if you can see this, is secured and I do not know the Wi-Fi password. So mission failed. Let's just go home and hatch some deerlings. So then I walked back home from Burger King. I just noticed this green dot here, meaning I have someone on Street Pass. If this is just me, I'm going to feel really stupid. I'm so stupid. So now I have some um, not Burger King right there. And I have 12 boxes of deer. And some Fione that I forgot that I still needed to hatch yesterday. I'd say we are ready to do some more trading. So let's go. Since the creation of the first tier list in the 1970s by famed inventor James Tierlist, it's been scientifically proven that every streamer must create a tier list at some point during their life. So I decided to fulfill this obligation while also doing some wonder trades on May 25th, starting with Taco Bell menu items. I hope I, I didn't ruin too many, I, I hope I didn't burn too many bridges with my opinions here, my hot takes. And of course, let me scroll up a little bit more for the full picture. S plus is Baja Blast, and uh, it's really Baja Blast Bell. Fast food is just a bonus down here. Next up was every single Mountain Dew flavor, except it wasn't every single Mountain Dew flavor. This tier list was kind of janky. Then I ranked a bunch of different kinds of sandwiches. Uh, the new Pokemon Snap stages. Then I ranked a lot of fast food restaurants, using the most sound rationale possible. I have no idea who Marco is. This isn't a really creative pizza logo. Like, I feel like they could have, like, made the M out of pizza, instead of just, like, making the M like that. Honestly, Marco, I've never had you before, but your logo kind of annoys me. You're going F tier. 
This tier list was also kind of jank because there were a lot of options for places that weren't fast food restaurants and there was the fictional Krusty Krab on there for some reason. And then the final was the big one, ranking all the Pokemon games. But I know what you're all thinking, this is a kind of controversial list. Pokemon Project Studio Red is in F tier and I know a lot of people are not happy about that, but I can explain. It's like a little print studio thing, which is pretty cute. Like, you get to make all sorts of fun printouts, like birthday cards and stuff. Like, it was a good idea. But the stupid thing is, they made two versions of it. So, if you wanted to make cool birthday printouts and stuff for your friends, you had to get both copies of this random PC software, which wasn't worth it. I thought it was dumb for them to, like, split that up into versions of all things. So that one goes into F tier. After all that tier listing, our Poke Miles were looking awfully close. And with one final trade with someone far away, I sealed the deal. That was the final one for the gauntlet. After 1487 trades, we have 49,514 Poke Miles, and the gauntlet is complete. But we don't have a Pokemon to use as the sub subject for the gauntlet yet. I'm going to go ahead and purchase these 99 rare candies. So we've got that. I'm going to check to see um, what time our file's at. It took 30, we're at 35 hours and 57 minutes, so it took about that amount of time to get there. But we've got a long journey ahead of us still. We are at 619 Pokemon seen, so we have like 102 to go, I'd say, before we have a fully complete Pokedex. But look at this incredible spread we've got here. There's only one breedable Pokemon that I didn't get over the course of this, and that's Venonat. The rest are all like evolutions or legendaries or mythicals. We made such a good dent in the decks doing this. After stream, I noticed that I forgot to increment the counter a few times, and checking the actual in-game number of trades that it took, it really took 1504 trades to get enough Pokemiles to reach level 100, averaging out at around 33 miles per trade. But I guess some of you may have also noticed that we still don't have a subject for this gauntlet yet, or the Pokemon that is going to actually be the one that gets trained to level 100. But that's to be decided later. We have to finish the national decks first. With the level 100 gauntlet thrown down, and stepped on, and destroyed, I still needed to breed more Deerling to finish the national decks. So on a trip back home, on various walks and hangouts with friends and family, I hatched more boxes upon boxes of Deerling. We just got a really cool CD from the thrift store. Do you have the case, Mike? It's in the back. Okay. <laughs> oh, now we're into the diesel truck. Making money. It was all a great time, and I was hatching a lot of deerling. But unfortunately, something would happen to my 3DS that I wasn't prepared for. Something that prevented me from using Pokemon Bank. So today's May 31st, and I hatched an ample amount of deer over the weekend. But unfortunately, my main 3DS that I use for Pokemon Bank is having some cartridge slot issues. It is not allowing the game to stay in there. There's something off with the springs in this cartridge reader. So I'm about to try and fix this so I can get in more Wonder Trades today. So I learned how to take apart my 3DS and looked into the issue, and thankfully it was a very easy fix. By pushing in a cartridge and pushing down this little metal tab right here, I was able to get the spring working again good as new. So I was then able to transfer all my Deerling off of X, onto Pokemon Bank, and then onto Y, the Wonder Trade file, and begin another day of trading this time keeping all the remaining Pokemon I need on the layout at all times. So the rest of the decks slowly began to trickle in as people in the chat tried to predict which Pokemon would be the last one I would need. If you asked me at the beginning of this challenge, I would have said it would have been a mythical Pokemon, or something like Porygon 2 or Porygon Z that was a tricky trade evolution, but most of those were already crossed off. And no way, we just got Matt! With the caption, Matt! And we got Matt! <laughs> Matt the Clefairy! And thanks to someone named Quentin, who was doing a lot of the dirty work of hacking and removing these ribbons from mythical Pokémon, 
mythicals were out of the picture by the end of the day. While people were predicting though, I wasn't actually voicing my predictions myself because I knew if I did that, I would instantly make it not be the final Pokemon because people would go out of their way to start trading me that. The greatest noise. Its name is Dililili. Let's go. And then there were two left. The final two being Mian Xiao and Mandibuzz. Both 5th gen Pokemon caught in the late game that evolve at a very high level, who also happened to start with the letter M. Definitely not the final two I was expecting, but two worthy adversaries that could actually be captured in the wild pretty quickly within 5th gen, transferred up to 6th gen, and traded over easily. So no matter what it took, I was pretty confident we were going to finish that night. So confident, in fact, that I decided to put the chat through an experience playing the Nightcore version of Cotton Eye Joe that I've spared you, the YouTube viewer, from hearing right now, until both of these trades were completed. Would playing a song as torturous as that cause a fight or flight response first? And soon, I had my answer. What's up, yo-yo? Soon, Mandibuzz came over. I'm listening to Cotton Eye Joe Nightcore, but you can't hear it because it's in my earbuds. We have one Pokemon remaining, me and Xiao. And by recording this video and dramatically talking about it, the chat has to listen to more Cotton Eye Joe right now. <laughs> it's over! It's over! That is the final trade! That's it. <laughs> 1831 trades, actually might be more than that. Link trades, 1834. So I was off by three. So in game, since we only have the Kalos decks here and we won't have the national decks till we finish the game and we only have one badge, it only displays 457. But I could check the national decks total with Pokemon Bank on another 3DS. Just a couple days before I had made a new Pokemon Bank account that only that Pokemon Y had interacted with so the national decks on that Pokemon bank would reflect accurately the exact number of Pokemon I had. 44 hours and 3 minutes, plus all the time it took me to hatch things. We've done it. Now do it again, but only count shinies? No thank you, Rai. <laughs> Alright, here are all of the beautiful creatures we've received through trade so far, by the way. Look how many boxes we got. This is insane. And the empty spaces uh, you might see... Our Pokemon that are level 1, that's 41 boxes right there, and those are actually sitting here. We have like all of these beautiful Pokemon right here that are candidates to be the level 1 Pokemon that wins the gauntlet. But look at this, National Deck 721, this is the only game that's ever connected to it. We have the entire National Pokedex registered. We did it. We actually did it, y'all. Oh, look at that. That's the shiny Jirachi. And this has the cool thing where, like, it uses the 3DS gyro to make stuff, like, look holographic. I love that feature. I think the Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, uh, and Sun and Moon Pokedex did that, too. But that's it, y'all. We've completed the National Pokedex using only Wonder Trade. And I definitely couldn't have done it without y'all. Considering, like, the hoops we had to jump through to get mythicals and stuff. It's been quite the journey. It's been quite the journey. Look how many Zygarde's I got. <laughs> I have such a fun collection of Pokemon from y'all now. They'll always live on this extra bank profile, by the way. I made this bank profile specifically for all these Wonder Trade Pokemon. It was all happiness from there. But the story still wasn't quite over. We had to choose a Pokemon to train to level 100. Taking 141 of the nicknamed level 1 Pokemon I received over the course of this, plus Chungus Jr., the level 10 Gulpin that I traded from the GTS earlier, I created a tournament bracket where chat would vote to decide which Pokemon would be the subject of it all. This Pokemon would also be the subject of quite the trial afterwards. Playing through the rest of the game, the other 7 badges in the Elite Four disobedient since it would be a level 100 traded Pokemon. 
It was a long and hard fought battle, with tensions higher than any stream I had ever done before, with the bracket full of upsets. And at the end of it all, a simple Murkrow named Hashtag Murkrow reigned victorious. So I fed the Murkrow the 99 rare candies that I had earned from all the Pokemiles from the trades before, all the way until it reached level 100, the pinnacle of power for a Murkrow. And now from this point, I need to play through the rest of the game with this thing, with it being disobedient, so I can beat the game, actually get the national Pokedex, and double check to make sure that I've caught them all. But that's a story that's going to be saved for a different video. Thanks so much for watching, and thanks so much if you've even just once considered hopping on Wonder Trade and trading with me during all this. I'll see you next time.